Thanks to these little boards, you can make your own Zigbee devices. Scrap ESP Home and Wi-Fi, these boards let you use the Zigbee network to make smart devices. But wait, why would you want to? Well, the Zigbee network has a bunch of benefits and yeah, a couple of drawbacks over the much easier solution, that being Wi-Fi and something like ESP Home. Zigbee is a low power mesh network, which means that it's much better for battery power devices and for signal strength, thanks to mains power devices acting as repeaters, hence the mesh in the name. As an example, my Philips Hue light bulbs act as repeaters, meaning devices that are too far away from the coordinator, the, the main router or access point if we're talking in Wi-Fi terms, can still connect just fine via the bulbs. The other major advantage is that these devices are not, and cannot, connect to the internet. You need a hub of sorts, and as it turns out, running your own hub with Home Assistant and a Zigbee dongle is ridiculously easy, video on the cards above, and means that you don't need to rely on Chinese servers to make your light bulbs work. Great, right? The downside to Zigbee really is only speed and complexity. If you need to transfer lots of data, like a, a video doorbell for example, then yeah, Wi-Fi is still the better choice. And on the complexity side, up until now it has been nigh on impossible to make your own devices that connect to the Zigbee network. But thanks to companies like Espressif and Silicon Labs, it's now possible. So how do you make a Zigbee device? Well, you will need to start with a little board like this. This is an ESP32C6 from Seed Studio, the Zhao ESP32C6 specifically. You can use an ESP32H2 as well. Basically the H2 is the Zigbee Thread BLE only version, whereas the C6 is the, the big brother as such and supports Wi-Fi 6 as well. You can also use a Silicon Labs board like this one, Although my testing and coding has all been done with the ESP boards and their libraries, so your mileage may vary on that one. Zigbee uses the AO2.15.4 standard for low power 2.4 GHz networking, but unlike Thread and Matter, which at least with the former is also you know, using that standard, Zigbee is a full stack protocol, meaning Zigbee handles both the application layer, as in what is said between devices, and the communications layer, as in how things are said between devices. Matter is just the application layer and requires a communications protocol below it, like Thread and Wi-Fi, to actually do anything. Zigbee is also much easier to work with on an individual basis, as devices that you create connect as if they were any other professional device. Whereas with Thread and Matter devices, you need to get them certified to create the QR code needed to commission the devices. This means that you can make a Zigbee device and then just start using it as if you'd bought it, and that's great. As for the actual how, well that's where we're going to start to get into the very nerdy weeds. So I'll understand if that isn't for you, but let's start by looking at some code. We'll start with the uh, sort of options that you have for devices based on the examples in no particular order. We can make a CO2 sensor, a color dimmable light, a color dimmer switch, a dimmable light, an occupancy sensor, a basic just on-off light and on-off switch, a pressure and flow sensor, a device to scan the available Zigbee networks, a sleepy temperature and humidity sensor, a basic temperature sensor, and a thermostat. To be clear, that isn't every type of Zigbee device possible, and here's that full list, and as you can see there are a fair few more options there. But this is all that the Espressive Zigbee library owners have written for us. Let's look at the on-off light example as, as the simplest option. The Arduino file is remarkably simple. You initialize the light, create a function to be called when the light state is changed, in this case that just toggles the built-in LED, uh, but this is where that you would write any code that you would want to actually control those external LEDs or even a relay to then supply power to the LEDs themselves, whatever you want to do, write it in here. 
you'll probably want to set the manufacturer and model, assign the uh, sort of set LED function, and then add the endpoint and wait for it to connect to the network. Once it's connected, it drops into the loop. Then it just checks the onboard boot button to see if that's been pressed. If so, and it's been held for three seconds, it will factory reset the board. And if not, then it just toggles the light state. Flashing this to the board with the Zigbee mode set to end device and the partition scheme set to Zigbee 4 uh, megabits with spiffs. Well, we see it connects to Home Assistant just fight. And once connected, you can toggle the light from both Hass and the button on board. And if you do toggle it from the button, you can see its state being updated in Home Assistant basically instantly. That's really cool. I also want to look at the sleepy temperatures and humidity sensor as that's key for battery powered devices. Looking at the INO file, it's pretty similar to the light for the most part. You initialize the temp sensor, you've got a function for what to do when it gets new data, but there are a few tweaks here. At the end of that measure and sleep function, there's a call to make the ESP drop into deep sleep. And the, in the setup, there's a call to enable the wake timer with a 55 second sleep time, leaving five seconds for the device to be awake to send the data and then go back to sleep again. You'll also want to set the power source to battery and set the percentage with the percentage being able to be updated with the set battery percentage command at any time. And finally, you'll need a custom Zigbee end device configuration to change the keep alive timer to 10 seconds so it doesn't break when it's trying to send any data. So this measures the temperature and humidity, or at least, well, it would if you'd actually hooked up a temperature sensor like a, a BME 280 or something like that to it. Uh, it reports it and then sleeps for 55 seconds. You can adjust that sleep value uh, at the top uh, and have it sleep for sort of longer or shorter, depending on especially battery power, uh, how much sort of battery life you'd want, which at least for this little seed board, I measured it around 63 milliamp hours for the three or so seconds per minute that it's on. By my maths, that's an average of 3.15 milliamp hours at most. Now, that is a very rough measurement and nowhere near truly accurate. And I also suspect that the H2 is possibly a decent bit more power efficient. So if that is a concern and you don't need Wi-Fi, then this is definitely a better choice. The most in-depth part of this little exploration is this. I wrote a backend and example for a light sensor. It took me a couple of days to wrap my head around the code and being able to basically ape existing code helped an awful lot. But let me do my best to explain something that I have a very tentative grasp of myself. So the main thing you need to know before trying to make your own configuration or own, you know, Zigbee device that isn't in the sort of standard list here is that, like I said, it needs to be within this existing device identifiers list. And luckily, well, one, there are a lot of options here, including white goods device ID if you want to, you know, make a smart washing machine or something like Samsung does. But for our case, the light sensor device ID is all we need. So for actually writing your own backend stuff, you'll probably want to crib from the existing examples. In my case, I copied from the temperature sensor, which may or may not be the best one to go, but it works. So let's look at it. You of course have basically every, everything you'd expect, the class descriptor and the initialization, the set illuminance function, which is what actually sets the light, the new light value, set min and max, uh, so what the minimum and maximum your device can output, set tolerance is an interesting one. There is actually, as part of the illuminance measurement descriptor, there is a tolerance uh, ID attributes, and this is basically just how accurate your sensor is. So if the sensor is accurate to one lux, then you would set one here. If it's accurate to 0.1 lux, then you'd set that here too. As for set reporting, that is how often it will actually send new reports. So while the sensor itself might wake up every second or every minute, whatever, uh, you only actually need to send new updates to Zigbee uh, with this sort of setting. So you can set the minimum, maximum uh, intervals and the delta. The delta is what will help trigger 
uh, between the minimum and maximum. So you might set the minimum to, I don't know, 30 seconds and the maximum to 180 seconds. Uh, but if the delta, if it changes enough, so if it changes by, say you set this to one lux and the light level changes by 10 lux, then as long as it's within the minimum and maximum, it will report that earlier than the maximum, essentially. And then we have the final actually report it, actually send the data over Zigbee. To look at the actual code from the back end here, we have the initialization. The only thing that I actually had to change or had to make from scratch essentially is this default config. Um, the default temperature one exists just fine, but light sensor doesn't exist. And this is the uh, device descriptor for that or the default descriptor. Uh, I have added that here, uh, it's just down at the bottom uh, with the illuminance config, measured value, min value. These default value options technically might not be right. I mean, the uh, temperature sensor one has just standard default for value, min and max, whereas the illuminance measurement technically doesn't. It does have the uh, default value, but it then has the attribute um, min and max value defaults. Either way, it is available and that's what I've set it to for now. Can be, uh, can be corrected later if necessary. As for the actual code itself, uh, setting the min and max is just standard. You're just setting the, uh, the attributes to the, that cluster, in our case, the light measure cluster. Uh, the set tolerance is the same. I've actually corrected this in a number of the existing files as well, the uh, different cluster or add attribute to a cluster functions. Um, and again, that's just the same. Uh, for the set reporting, this is just setting the intervals. I think I actually need to change this back to a float so that it can handle uh, point one uh, type thing. So I'll change that back. And then there is the uh, set illuminance, which is just setting the uh, you know new value, and then the report illuminance, which is what actually sends the new values over Zigbee as well. As for the example code, again, this is basically just slightly modified. So we have a function to update the light sensor value itself. In this case, we're just getting the te temperature, but you would change this to actually read your own light sensor when you attach one. Uh, and then you have, uh, in this case, we were doing uh, a multi-threaded like task create to handle just checking this, in this case, every second. You can do this in a bunch of ways, including like the uh, sleep uh, temperature and humidity sensor as well. That's perfectly possible. This is just how this one's set up. Uh, we set the reporting and then we report uh, as we loop through. And again, you have the option to factory reset as always. That backend code is likely pretty imperfect, but it does work. And the ability to create new options is really cool. A lot of the customization is likely in the get the data part of the Arduino file rather than this sort of backend stuff. But I figured since I was working on it, I'd share at least a little of what I've been learning. I would submit a pull request to add all of this into the official repos, but I can't work out where to submit all of the changes. The ESP underscore Zigbee underscore HA underscore standard dot H file needs updating to support the default config for the light sensor that was missing, but the version of that file that is in the official ESP Zigbee SDK repo is practically empty, meaning the version from the Arduino core must come from somewhere else, and I have no idea where that is. If you have any idea, please do let me know so that I can push the, some of these new examples and the couple of bug fixes that I found too. Anyway, that is DIY Zigbee as it stands today. I'm sure as these boards get more popular and available, more people will do more impressive stuff than this, but I know that I'm going to be tinkering with some Zigbee devices, and who knows, maybe I'll make some available at some point too. Of course, as always, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think about these Zigbee boards making your own Zigbee devices? Is that something of interest? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. If you want to check out more videos somewhat similar to this one, hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon and check out plenty of other videos on the end cards. And if you want to check out my own hardware, the open source response time and latency testing tools, those are available at osrtd.com, linked in the description. Otherwise, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you on the next video.